Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just, just wanted to say all these videos, they're a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, really. You gotta watch all the videos and they all sort of come together in the end and you know, all the pieces go together, if you know what I mean. So, this video is gonna be talking about how to clean or how to wash off the mud, how to wash off the mud and where to wash it off, what to wash it off with so you don't do damage, okay? And I may have touched on it or mentioned it in other videos, but this is going to be specific about how to clean the vehicle and get that mud off without causing other damage, okay? Because if you've got mud in certain places, mud or dirt, sand, debris, and you're using pressure washers, you can in fact be pressing that grit into underneath the seal where the seals against off the metal surface where it's meant to seal if you know what I mean so you know how to wash the mud off so look and where okay because people say where where do I do that you know so you got full driving the first thing is I suppose step by step here the first part of the equation is mud equals money okay so you want to avoid mud at all costs except for something worse than the cost of the mud okay so if you're going to go around the side of a bog hole that's on a hill on an angle and you're going to slide sideways and end up in the bog hole on your side instead of on your tires uh, it wasn't worth it then was it so just think about what you go around guys because some people do slip into things um, traction isn't always what you think it is so really have a good look at what you're going around but look generally avoid the mud if you've got a puddle go around it slow down go slow so it doesn't throw it all over the undercarriage of the vehicle if you go slow and you avoid what you can it's going to make it easier for your cleaning if you love cleaning and you love mud stop watching now <laughs> now so if you get a bit of mud it's mainly going to be around your wheel arches maybe under your side steps or sliders if you've got those in place okay um, all that big thick mud it probably doesn't matter if you use a pressure washer to clean it off in those areas <coughs> like you know your tires your wheels your wheel arches that sort of thing I don't think it's going to cause too many issues same under the side steps and stuff like that but if you've got some mud flicked underneath the vehicle off your tires in all sorts of places over towards your drive shafts let's say and you know say there's mud around your your CV and your Sorry about that guys, bit of an interruption of a phone call that I had to take, so it's all good. Um, where was I? I probably should have watched a bit of the end of the other video where I got cut off. Mud, okay, so it's flicked under around your drive shafts and CVs and all these sorts of moving parts. That's where you can have a problem. If you get straight under there with that pressure washer and um, you're sort of like... That there's that pressure what we talked about. How's this clan, mate? Oh, mate, you got it. This is Melbourne, Australia, guys. I don't know where you're from. Check out this guy. It's just come up the uh, right turn lane. <laughs> no problem, mate. We've got plenty of courtesy here. Well, some people have. But anyway, it wouldn't it be just easier to stay in the... I don't know. Anyway, see? Easily distracted, but you'll see it all. Did you see the excitement in the other video? The car that did the U-turn in front of me? Anyway maybe a week or two ago whenever it was whenever I put the video up or maybe I haven't released it yet I don't know if you've worked it out but we've got plenty of videos and we just sort of release one one or two a day sort of thing depending what the flavor of the day is what questions are being asked really um, what we feel like and what you want so as I said let me know in the comments what you want to know because they're the videos we try and put out so look don't hit it with a pressure washer you're going to push all that mud and grit straight into the seal and cause yourself leaks and these are the sorts of places where you're going to get those leaks and that you've got to be careful of in no particular order but slightly at the transfer case the forward facing propeller shaft at the transfer case common place that mud gets thrown from your left hand front tire directly across across to there and then people get in there with a pressure washer and you, as I said, oh, you're just forcing all that mud and grit right towards that seal. You know, you can't do it, guys. Um, on the front drive shafts, the front diff seals, right? Usually it'll, usually it'll only be a minor leak or a sweat. And sometimes it can start leaking and actually stop again when it clears itself of that grit. Or it can do some longer 
permanent damage by staying there and rubbing against the metal and putting a groove in and stuff like that. And this is what I say when I say mud equals money and we're barely touching the surface. I think we need to do another video called mud equals money, but this is not that. This is how to clean it. I'll get to it. I'm trying to explain why. I do things in detail. I think you figure that out now, or most people have. So I want you to understand why I'm telling you, you because some people are thinking, how to clean the mud? I don't know how to clean the mud off, and I don't know where to do it. But people don't, because they're asking the questions and they're having these problems. That's why it's important to listen. Okay, and enjoy the scenery. What a day. Look at that sky. Well, in Melbourne, Australia, awesome weather. You know what? When you see this video, it's going to be completely different. But what's the weather like for you today? I hope you're having an awesome day. So... You want to avoid these moving parts, mud, you don't want to force, so what do you do? Okay, you just want to use water, okay? So some of the old school ways people use in sprinklers and stuff like that, that's probably just going to waste too much water and not really get direct to the spot. So unfortunately, if you want to play in the mud or after a trip, you need to give the vehicle a wash and you need to do it yourself by hand. It needs to be done. We're going to call this professionally after you watch the expert video on how to clean the mud off your car. And that's this, right? We're not going to get in there and demonstrate. It's going to get wet. It's going to get muddy. We're going to get spray on the screen. So you've got to concentrate. Water. You just want to use your garden hose. Now, turn, don't piddle around. You need to still have a bit of pressure. So turn it right up. You need to have decent water pressure. Um, on the setting on our trigger sprayers, Jet may be the one, sometimes Fool's the one. It just depends on what pressure you got and what trigger sprayer, but you know, like watering the garden shower type setup's not gonna do it. Too much pressure on the jet could cause problems, so then you would need to go back to one that's called Fool. Basically, you kinda like a, want a, what, a lot of water. You want a bunch of water coming out of that hose. Might even work better taking that whole end off the hose. If you've got a water tank and you're using water tank water, even better with your little pump. And you just take the end off the hose completely and just use your finger, you know, the old school way, right? You know, the old school, back 40 years ago, mate, people, a lot of people couldn't even afford little nozzles for the end. They just had a hose, mate. Back when you, you've been a wally with water, you know, don't be a wally with water. Back before those days, right? Decades ago in Australia, people had hoses. They were just laying on the ground. There was no, you know, nozzle or trigger spray or anything like that. So... You're going to waste a bit of water doing this, unfortunately, and I can't guarantee whether you're allowed to do it in your area, but this is the way to do it right. And I would make suggestions like sometimes using using pressure washers, even though it might be less litres per minute, you also got to take into account the electricity. And if you haven't got enough water coming out, it's not doing the job. It can take you a lot longer, so it's kind of not necessarily using less water. So it may be the wrong thing to do or illegal in some places, but... Um, you may be doing the right thing by using less water, you know. So the rules are made to, you know, for the right reasons usually to try and get a better outcome, but it doesn't always work out. So you may need to vary that. That's for you to figure out. Maybe you need to buy a water tank. I don't know. But the hose, the water, get lots of water on there. Use your finger or whatever setting to get a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Work your way on the thickest mud first. Now, do it the same day while it's still wet. It's going to fall off while it's wet a lot easier. It's just going to fall off and come up. If you let it dry, uh, you've got to re-soak it again. So what you've got to do there is you've got to move around the vehicle. So you might wet one wheel arch, spend 30 seconds, go to the next one. Spend th you're going to get some mud off, but it's mainly going to soak. It needs to soak. Trust me, by letting it soak, it falls off so much quicker. So go soak each wheel arch. Then go and soak under your side steps. Go and soak other, Then go back to the start. And work your way, keep working your way around. It's kind of like going to get more off and it's going to re-soak again, depending how thick this mud is. You're going to start learning at this point in time not to go back to that park again because it's really sticky clay mud that's hard to get off or don't drive and spin your wheels and play in that mud because you're going to pay for it for hours afterwards. You're to, this is where you're going to learn these things, right? You can learn the hard way or the easy way. I've done heaps of cleaning. The vehicles go out a lot. They go and hit the tracks. I avoid the mud sometimes that's right sometimes it's going to happen you know it's just going to happen so um get all the thick layers of mud off with a hose don't go near it with a pressure washer in my opinion okay not the sprinkler not the pressure washer just a nice amount of pressure enough like i said you can use a pressure washer on your wheel arches and mud flaps and all that's not going to cause any issues i've explained the areas where i would like you to be careful but i think the more water with a mediocre pressure works better to remove that thick mud anyway it's better for soaking 
unless you've got some massive industrial pressure washer and you may have that everyone's different general information guys right so everyone's different um, the deal is if you've got one of those you might blast it off in 10 seconds that's awesome just be careful of your paint work and everything else those rubber flaps underneath the front wheel arches um, if they're getting old you might just blow those to pieces and you're going to cost yourself some work I'll give you some examples this vehicle 12 years old it's still got the original rubbers in there at the front wheel arches yeah they could probably do with replacement but if you keep them clean and not hit them too hard with pressure and other product they do last pretty well okay but not on every car right depends on the heat the v6 i think eats them up a bit quicker they might generate a bit more heat with the exhausts being closer and stuff like that so there's a few variables like that there you go little bonus information once you've done that there's no point spraying truck wash on because it's just going to penetrate the outside layer of the mud the mud's 10 or 20 mil thick what's truck wash going to do on the outside of the mud nothing right so you need to get the mud off first then you're going to use your whether it's the king kd grazier lock that i use don't leave it on too long only in the wheel arches and underbody not on the paintwork in my opinion um you, then you're going to put that on it's to release the staining the mud staining the color it looks dirty but it's all the muds off but it looks dirty you can hit it with a pressure washer it doesn't work as well as spraying it with some product a lot of people use that c and i'm not promoting or unpromoting any products you can use whatever you like i like the um, kenko d Grooza for engine bays and more stubborn areas and different mixes depending on how bad it is you don't necessarily have to do this and you don't have to do it every time because of course you're going to have to wash it off and it means more water and you might be just going out again next weekend i say get the mud off otherwise it's going to fall off in your garage or next time you drive in the rain it's going to loosen it up and it's going to fall out in your driveway and in your garage and then you're just going to have to use more water to clean it then anyway okay so clean the thick mud and then if it's you know if it works for you if that's what you want to do then you use your product and then you use your pressure washer to you know obviously wash all that off and you can get underneath the car with a pressure washer a bit on all the metals the fuel tank guards and diffs away from the moving parts you know what i mean with the moving parts you know diff pinions right avoid your uni joints a bit you don't want to be forcing dirt mud water into those avoid your slip joints a bit avoid like i said the propeller shafts at each end where they go in and out of the transfer case and diffs and stuff like that your cvs your boots your wheel bearings avoid these areas with pressure okay let the product do the work you can use the pressure washer on the shafts up and down on the boots on the outside a bit the closer you get to where that joint is if you like where those seals are you want to keep your distance let the water do the work let the water wash that sandy muddy grit dirt and rocks off before you push it into where you don't want it okay hope you understand where i'm getting getting that sort of thing now where do you do it people are saying where do you do it well see this thing right in front of me the road look at all that dust and dirt on the left where that van pulled in there's just so much dirt and crap in the gutters around anyway in melbourne australia um who cares so look have a think about it you don't want to do it in your garage you don't want to do it in your driveway you don't want to even do it on your nice gravel driveway you know you don't want to do it on your bitumen driveway you might be able to do it on your grass if it's summer and your grass is dry and needs a good water then you park the vehicle on the grass areas if you can and my tip is don't turn the steering wheel if the vehicle's not moving you're going to dig up your grass you don't want that you shouldn't be doing that anyway to look after the vehicle the rack and the pump and all your steering system you shouldn't turn your steering wheel unless the vehicle's moving okay avoid it where possible don't move all the way forward and then turn lock to lock and then move back lock to lock as you're coming towards the end of where you're moving is where you turn all the way to lock and don't hold it on the lock but that's another video right we'll do that some other time but if you watch this one then you got that little tip as well right so you park it on your grass in summer because it's all dry and firm you wash it you get the mud off and your grass gets a water and look whether you do it with your hose or you just wait until the next rains it's all going to get settled in depending what your grass is like i don't know what you've got you don't like the idea of that that's cool or it's winter and it's all soft and you don't want to mince it up i get you i'm hearing you so the only option you've got left you can't go to a car wash because they don't have a hose they've got a pressure washer they don't even like you leaving the mud there a lot of them right some of them have set bays you've got to use that bay only some say don't bring your mud here so what do you do you're forced to wash it in the street okay you haven't got a hose you can't wash it off out bush you know so you're forced to wash it in the street so what you do is 
you come home straight away and you spend about 10 minutes and hose the worst of all the mud off in the street and you hose it into the gutter look it's not rubbish okay it is dirt it's all going to go back where it came from it's going to go down the gutter into the drains out into the creeks into the rivers out it's just a bit of dirt it's a very small amount compared to a lot worse things that people are putting into the system I certainly don't agree with any sort of rubbish or other chemicals getting washed down drains I don't like it you know you want to go to the beach for a swim but then you want to complain why water's so dirty why it looks like that why it feels like that why it tastes like that why it feels like that and it's aggressive on your skin it's because of all the crap it's all your litter and all your chemicals and all the things you wash down see the roads here all the oils the coolants it goes in think about it in case you haven't thought about it it goes down there into that drain there right on the right right there it goes down into the drainage system it doesn't get filtered it goes into the creeks the rivers into the bay and into the oceans right you're putting it back into there not good right so it's important to not have oil leaks and coolant leaks for this reason okay so basically you can do it's just a bit of mud and dirt you can do it in the street now it's up to you whether you want to save water and just leave it sitting there because it's going to dry up everyone's going to drive over it's going to get blown around like dust and whatever which is like what's happening anyway i demonstrated not too bad around here but back there as it was a perfect time to say hey look at all that it was just it was an inch of dust and dirt you know trucks building industry people they're in and out of sites with mud and it's all over roads so you know they're doing a hundred times more than what one four-wheel drive is going to put out in a street once a week or two or three or once a month right so just giving you options if you keep it clean you won't have to do this right um, that's where you do it you do it out in the street it's up to you if you leave it there if it blows away if it gets washed away or whether you spend an extra few minutes just hosing it into the gutter if you want you can actually just hose it into the gutter only some dirty water is going to go down the street at this point you can get your shovel and you can shovel it up and put it on your garden or in your bin or whatever we're not talking about a stupid amount of mud you can you can find something have a think about it you i've given you some ideas right then when you've just got a little bit left because you don't want to stand there hosing mud down the street you're just going to waste heaps of water ridiculous guys we can't afford to do that these days right so be wise with water i'm not telling you to go out and be a wally um and then when you've just got the last little amount left a quick hose like one minute you know so look know what your water restrictions are know what your water pressure pressure washer what it puts out just try and adapt the information that i've shared with you now to help you understand so that you don't damage any seals cause any oil leaks push grid into you know you push grid into your pinion seal and you you're going to be to do that your whole diff center your axles got to come out your whole diff center has got to come out really to do it properly i mean there's shortcut ways to do it but it's kept and risky it's like you know it may or may not work so you might as well be doing a diff rebuild while you're in there and doing all the bearings and everything. It's going to cost you hundreds, if not a th about a thousand bucks to get your diff out with all the seals and oils and rebuilding bearings. And it could be over a thousand bucks. What? Because you washed your car? This is why this video is really important, right? It is really important that you have watched this video so if you have and you get it please give me the thumbs up for that information if i've earned your subscription and you haven't already subscribed and make sure you've got that bell on guys even if you subscribe you don't want to um be subscribed not have the bell on and be falling behind and i'll be looking at the comments to see what you've got to say about that and for ideas on more videos you know what i think i'm in the wrong lane and on that note bada bing we are out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. That was how to wash the mud off your forby.